Welcome to the Q's Militia Podcast with those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. What's up, Q's Nation? Thanks for tuning in to the Q's Militia Podcast with Sean and Joe. If you like it, please share it. As always, the universal handle for the socials is at Q's Militia go there join the militia we are the only syracuse sports podcast centered around giving you the fans a voice so welcome and we're back we're back we're gonna have have special guest tyler morona and we're going to talk defense joe the the man of the um sometimes he sets the agenda sometimes he bites off a little bit more than he can chew oh and so um this is the reason for doing the the entire defense in one episode with the offensive line. So we're going to try to get it all done. Yeah. Well, Today. Tyler said he wanted to do defense. Come on. Yeah. Well, we had Tyler on. We'll we'll give him his we'll give him his his shot on defense. He's always it's always fun to have him, and then I don't have to talk much. Which yeah. Is and great. he was a defensive player, and yeah. you know we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're looking at uh, doing the preview here of the first game. So here shortly. So. Yeah. What do we got? A week and a half, something like that. Hey, yeah. Listen. So a couple. Of announcements before we get into the rest. The, um, if, well, I guess this doesn't make much sense. If you're having to listen to us on a different format, you need to let me know. I need an email on that or something on that, a tweet or whatever, because. You know, how are they going to hear this then? That's why I said if you're listening on a different format than what you usually <laughs> listen on. So we're. We're in uh, transition. Armchair, armchair All Americans switched over. They're now Armchair Media, and their whole platform has changed. There's a redirect in there for our show. This is our first show that we're trying to redirect with, and we just, uh, I just don't know what's going to happen. So I'm relying on you all to help us out if you're having to find this show somewhere else that you're not used to finding it. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> But uh, you'll notice the new, the different logo. It's actually the old logo, but with kind of an armchair media re- redo or take on it. So anyway, um, that's that. What else? Uh, the reviews. There's a couple new reviews. I want to wait to read reviews so I can give stuff out. And I have um, some stuff coming. So we're going to wait for that stuff before we do that. So I just want you to know I do see them and I appreciate them and we will get to them. Yes. But if you, if you have not reviewed us on iTunes, please do so. It is huge to us, and it actually is part of the algorithm for people finding Syracuse Sports Podcasts. And so that is why uh, we sit on here and ask you for those. So we appreciate it. Five stars. If you could give ten, I know you would. But yeah, five, five you know, share, share stuff five, too, social media. You know. you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, keep it to yourself. Any uh, help we can get. Yeah, we appreciate it. So mm-hmm. anyway... Uh, with that said, Joe and I are going to do a little bit of the news, which is not much, which no. is kind of refreshing for a change, because <laughs> I hate being buried in the little tidbit sometimes. But we are, however, going to talk about our sponsor for this episode, and that is, of course, my bookie. And as we know, it is a new season. Antonio Brown is with the Raiders, and he's having all sorts of issues <laughs> from from freezing his feet to uh, being a little baby about his helmet. And then we got Le'Veon oh Bell, and he's with the Jets. Odell Beckham is now in Cleveland. The one thing that has not changed, though, and that's where I'm putting my money on all of these games this upcoming season. My bookie is the place to bet every weekend for the football season. My bookie has better bonuses and more prop bets than any other sports book, period. This year, they're hosting the first online handicapping sports contest. First place is guaranteed to win at least $100,000, and it only costs you $100 to enter. I mean, that's quite the payout. Let's be honest. All you got to do is pick five NFL games against the spread every week to climb the leaderboard and score your share of the huge cash prize pool. Now, I would only recommend a service to my listeners. That's been good to me. That's why I'm urging you to go over to my bookie right now. You bet, you win, they pay. My bookie has live in-game betting on every NFL game. They've got the most rewarding player perks in the business. And for all you fantasy guys and gals out there, you can even bet the over-under on how many fantasy points a player will score each game. So, they have changed... The promo code, and they have changed the deal. 
It is now up to $1,000 first deposit bonus. You can double it. Uh, up whatever your deposit is up to a thousand okay just use promo code chair that is the new media uh, the network promo code chair c-h-a-i-r to activate that offer visit my bookie online today that's m-y-b-o-o-k-i-e and don't forget to use the promo code chair when creating your account to claim that bonus bet win and get paid thank you my bookie so what kind of news do we have? Good job. Yeah. What, 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 <laughs> what kind of news do we have coming in here? Let's see. Dungy was, he did get a formal invite to the XFL, and he screenshot that uh, email, and he tweeted it out. You can check out check that out on Twitter. Um, so, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Is it going to interfere with what he's doing in Syracuse with TK99 and all that stuff this 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 summer I don't know but yeah I don't know we know where I don't he know had when his that heart I don't either <laughs> but it's is it after regular football that's not gonna compete with the NFL is it doesn't I would think that they're not that dumb that's what happened I mean, this last is just time, for right? the draft I think right now they're putting out invitations to see who right. accepts for for the draft so February honestly, 2020 February 2020 Joe I'm sorry it's right okay yeah me. so yeah. okay so right after the NFL but yeah. um. I just think I think he got let go and released from the Giants because of an injury, so he's probably not 100% healthy, and his dream is the NFL. Um, and he's got this thing, like you said, in town. So I just think that he's kind of committed to that and probably trying to get back from his injury. I probably don't see a situation where he does that this year. You know what I mean? I think because he's got things set up, it'll probably get a legit chance again next year in the – in the preseason for the NFL um, and workouts and stuff like that through the off season um, and then see how that XFL league actually pans out. You know, do you really want to, do you really want to risk injury or I mean, it's the ri- risk versus reward, right? Uh, right. I mean, you got, you could risk injury, but yet you can get noticed. So, no. And I mean, even the, what was it? The AAF or whatever this that old football league that yeah, they just tried doing. I mean, there's awesome. people talking yeah. about not getting paychecks and oh. stuff. So <laughs> when something like this starts, you just don't know how unstable it is, you know? So, yeah. uh, people are getting paid late and when you're not getting paid that much as it is, you know, I mean, uh, it, in all fairness though, isn't this Vince McMahon, the XFL? I believe it is. Yes. Which I mean, obviously, yes, he has money, but, uh, I mean, he's again, a businessman. I'm sure there's backers. I'm sure that. Yeah, but I mean, there's probably owners as well. So again, yeah. it's probably going to be up to the owners. I, I don't know how it's going to yeah, work. I'm just, right. I'm just saying that. And who cares? Knowing, right. Really. And knowing Dungeon, I mean, if I was him, having a sure thing that he's got right now in a in town, you know, be around the football team. I think what going finishing off school. So yeah, uh, if you can do that and then still you know get healthy and be able to use the facilities to stay in shape and get ready for next year and and just give yourself another try at the NFL and all the while I mean keep yourself you know keep your eye on this XFL league and see you know how it goes and see if yeah. it's actually an actual option in the future. But uh, I mean CFL to me I don't know how much they get paid and. I, 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 I don't know how many people want to live in Canada like that. I don't know if you have to or what the deal is, but that seems to be the only real second league that actually has been holding on. I don't watch it, and I don't know how popular it is, but it's been around for a while. The I CFL, don't know. Their so. their 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 niche is that it's more old school, like you know, without all the flags and the protecting the quarterback stuff and things like that that's like kind of like was like but the xfl yeah 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 i mean i can't you know, i remember they're the doing, last time they they're trying to do everything the nfl has changed or away from, taken, yeah. yeah yeah so i mean if you're gonna start well, if you're gonna start one that's the way you go i guess you know well i mean he did it before in the 2000s i believe and didn't work out that well, so we'll see. No, it was like one season or something like that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, moving on. Mwah, mwah. We have uh, wrapped up. The Orange have wrapped up, I should say, their trip to Italy. And uh, Coach was saying, now, you know, the whole the whole point of this was to see what we could take away, right? Well, Coach said right. it's much like playing a D2 team. He compared them to, like, a LeMoyne. And that not much could be taken away. 
But I think he walked that back a touch eventually. But, um, you know, you, you could take away very specific things in, the, in you know, court cohesion and the guys playing together, especially with all the, the, the new faces on the team. And, I mean, besides right. that, the chemistry on the court – and besides all that, they spent 10 days together in, you know, in another country. Right. Um, and the off-court stuff, I think, alone would have been worth the trip. You know, Sidibe, he was reported as moving much better after two years of the knee issues that he's gone through. Right. Um, last year's struggle at center can't go unmentioned. So that's a takeaway, I think. I mean... So with that said, the the camaraderie and, and stuff like that, and Sadibi seems to be doing good. That's terrific news. But 369 points scored, just about 92 a game, something like that. So uh, hmm. really good. I mean, and yeah. uh, Brahma, I mean, rebounds per game, 12. He averaged out. He hit like 20 <laughs> or 17 or something in the last game, which is just insane. Yep. And um, it, you know, we've got. Let's see if we skip around here a little bit. Forty-five point seven percent from the field as a team, thirty-six point two percent from three, fifty-eight point five percent from the free throw line. Uh. Uh, okay, so <laughs> some things never change, but <laughs> but you know that's something yeah, J- you can take away. Yeah, Jalen Carey, fifty-seven point two percent from the field. He averaged eleven points a game, eleven point eight, right on the cusp. Yeah, of 12. he turned it around after the after the, the first, first two game. games. Yeah, yeah, he didn't have as many turnovers, and he was playing a lot better. Started to take care of the ball. Gary Er, I don't think he can go unmentioned with no, nine and a half rebounds a game, as well as eleven point eight points a game and sixty-five percent from the field. So, um, and they yeah. talked about his physical presence alone, just being the guy that could get it done. I mean, going to be a huge addition this year. With the frame he's already got, and um, yeah, looking like a double double machine right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, the yeah. sky's the limit. Gerard him, so. Gerard averaging ten points and shooting forty four percent from three. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, Hughes averaging fourteen points a game, forty two percent from the field. So he took a yeah. lot of threes. He took a lot. Of yeah, Hughes is going to be the guy, obviously. Obviously, yeah. And, and Beheim's and- Beheim's going to have the green light. It, exactly. Yep, exactly. And you know, when we talk about Hughes and we talk about him being the guy, and we talked a lot last year, a lot last year about who can lead this team. I think, I think Hughes can lead the team. I think he's ready to lead the team. I mean, and if he's not, he's missing a great opportunity. So, um, you know, those are takeaways in my opinion. I think it's all good. Now we played yeah. some scrub teams. We know that. And who was it from, uh, UConn didn't get to play. Uh, Jerome, Jerome Dro- Dyson. Yeah, Jerome Dyson. Uh, he didn't play in the in the last game, and shoulda woulda been nice if he had maybe give some extra a little extra competition in a in a really sweltering gym where. Yeah, yeah he's an right, older guy, so. but yeah, yeah he well, definitely is. Whatever. He's a good player though. Yeah. Again, I, I, I think. How old is he now? How old is he now? I mean, it's a familiar name still, so it doesn't feel like that long ago. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea how old he is. I'm just saying he's older than the guys that are in college. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So didn't he play with Kemba Walker before that? Yeah, around that time. Even that doesn't. Yeah, but that, that doesn't seem that long ago. Was it three, four years ago? Mm, no. No. I mean, he. Nah. Than that? Oh, okay. Well, I think I'm more like ten. Talking. What? Eight, nine. Really? Are yeah. you shortening it up, or by my reaction, no. or what? <laughs> um no. okay I anyway wanna, i just don't want to admit that you're right maybe so yeah i don't know man i'm usually pretty good with time and direction and yeah well uh, whatever we'll see as far as as far as the, the basketball team goes it would be really uh, nice to have a, a a producer to help with this show that could do live fact checking for us wouldn't that be nice yeah that'd be really nice taking applications 2006 but, 2010 you can Oh my gosh! It was ten years ago, nine. So, so you were right. <laughs> it just does not seem that long ago. That's crazy. Right. Boy, oh boy, no. oh boy. Okay, yeah. I'm getting old. <laughs> we both are. Uh, so. so, all right. Anyway, we digress. Yeah. It's time to talk yeah. about the offensive line. Now, the you know you've got your first team, and when you look at it, we look at the new faces uh, coming in. You have Darius Tisdale and Ryan Alexander. Ryan Alexander, we've talked a ton about. Yeah. Um, 
And then, I mean, where do you want to start, Joe? Let's well, let's start with Ryan Alexander. Uh, red shirt sophomore, six five three twenty seven. Oh, that's Dakota Davis. My bad. Um, yeah, I was gonna say he's definitely not a sophomore. <laughs> red shirt senior, six three three zero seven. Um, and obviously he he was a two year starter at right right tackle for South Alabama, and he did earn Sun Belt honors mentions a, uh, a year ago before transferring. So a yep. guy with experience coming in and. Um, you know, he's going to be able to help out where there's gaps and there's some gaps and there's just some unknowns. So, um, on the line, it was kind of our biggest concern, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, definitely replacing the other tackle. I know that we lost two of them, but we always knew that, uh, surveys could pop out there and, and play the tackle if he needed to and have heckle go in and play center. And that's kind of their plan, uh, this year. So being able to bring in a, a guy like that, you pretty much bring in a guy that's a starting level center with Heckle, and then you solidify your tackles with uh, Ryan Alexander and Aaron Cervais. So, Aaron Cervais, Richard Jr., 6'6", 273. He started the last two years at center, but spent time at each of um, the two tackle spots in spring. So he's been named multiple preseason all ACC teams by Athlon. And it's being second, and Phil Steele's uh, had him at fourth. So, um, yeah. So obviously, he's going to probably slide over. Sam Heckle's going to uh, be snapping the ball. Retro Junior, six four, two eighty, and he started mm-hmm. at left guard as a redshirt freshman, and the team's third guard last fall. He had a lower body injury in the spring, and. Um, he did participate in camp, though, so he should be should be good to go. He came in a little Don't bit late, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, uh, he got a little banged up, I think, at the first scrimmage, or uh, but he's back at practice. They say that uh, they're not too worried uh, about him. He should be a, a full go come week one against Liberty. So another guy receiving some preseason accolades, all ACC recognition from Phil Steele on the second team, and Athlon had him on the third team. Is Evan Adams, redshirt senior, six six three fifty two, and he's a three year starter at right guard. So he's going to be he's going to be out there now. When when you look at this, Joe, and then you go and you look at some of the backups, are you worried about like I don't know how thin it kind of is? Uh I mean it's always next man up, right? So yeah, I mean there's plenty of guys, but. Right. Well, when you get to the training camp, you start to see the when you start to see the rotations, you start to see the guys that they're comfortable in. And obviously they're uh, what we what I read about today with Syracuse dot com is that they're they're trying to be as versatile as possible as possible on the line. So that's why you're seeing a lot of guys taking reps all over the place to see where they fit in in the line and maybe who are the best tackling guard, um, you know, duos so they can get the, the right guys on the right sides uh, and stuff like that. And then you obviously get the backups. And uh, as you can see, I mean, from everything that I've uh, seen and heard, uh, Darius Tisdale, um, the uh, junior college transfer, or sorry, the junior college guy we got this year, uh, he um, he's looking like he's going to take that other guard spot wherever it might be, the left or the right side, depending on where, uh, you know, everything falls. So, again, um, it brings us to, the other guys that you were talking about as far as backups where everything I've seen is pretty much Dakota Davis is the backup guard from there. And then, uh, Carlos Vettorello is, uh, the backup tackles. And that's kind of like their main guys right now in the main rotations. Uh, so again, there's always others, but, um, right now that's looking a little slim and it does scare me. I mean, one, two bad injuries, but right now, uh, we're sitting a lot prettier than, a lot of other teams, you know, there's a lot of other teams that might not have injuries, but they don't have the experience. And, and yeah, there is a kind ton of, of experience. That's right. One good so, thing. I mean, I think we have a solid four. Right. And, I mean, the, now, you know, it's hard to tell because there's so much, there's so much, um, in college, it just changes so much. So you, you've got yeah. these guys that, you know, that you've known, two, three-year starters, and then you've got Ryan Alexander, who we know because we've just talked about him so much, and Tisdale right. because we know his his ability. But you just look, and then it's just a bunch of unfamiliar faces. So like you said, it's just – I mean, that's what makes me nervous, and it is just next man right. up. It is what it is. So, I mean, yeah. they wouldn't well, be there if they couldn't play, but 
I know it makes people. I mean, I know it makes people nervous, and obviously, I mean, we can't get it twisted. We don't have the season that we have last year without the Coach the offensive Calumet line that we did. And, yeah. You know, so you know, you see the Coda Martin come in as a graduate transfer uh, senior yeah. last year, and how that worked out, and we go and grab a Ryan Alexander to go along with the two other returning starters, and then you hit it up, Sam Heckle. He started at guard as a redshirt freshman, and then we were so deep. I think that was because. Um, because Roberts got hurt uh, two years ago. He had a season-ending injury. Aaron Roberts did, so he had to go in and play for him, and he had a full year of experience. And then last year we had a, we were healthy, and he was like the f- next guy off the bench. He didn't even start. So now he comes in this year, and maybe some people have forgotten about him, but two years ago as a retro freshman, he started a full year in the ACC. So uh, to me, that's a proven starter. So, again, you look at we have four proven starters, and um, we need to have a similar – offensive line type was the last year uh to be able to have a successful season again so it's very important but again like you said that's like the toughest position to kind of judge and tell um they, it's, how, the how deep they heroes. are you know what i mean yeah, and they're the unsung heroes of a football team any football team mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it's oh, like yeah. you know you don't we don't spend a lot of time on them and they don't get you know they're not handed trophies all the time and they're not up on the on the you know, on the table after the games talking and things like that. So um, the unsung heroes, man, I mean, and it comes down to they are pretty much um, the most important key to Tommy DeVito's success this season. So uh, I think it's it's important to pay attention to it. And it's important that they get the cohesion they need to be able to um, do that. So anyway, anything else about the offensive line? Mm-hmm. No, just knock on wood for no injuries, man. Because, I, like I said, I, I like where we're at right now. I with know. The they, guys that yeah. we, you know, it's, yeah. and it's going to be a little bit of a different offense. Uh, I don't think they're going to have to worry about the quarterback scrambling around and buying time and running as much. So it's going to be a little bit different. But again, I think we're going to rely a little bit more on our, our running backs in the running game this year. So, again, um, it's definitely going to be a key cog to how, how we do. You know, seeing everybody's predictions on Twitter today about what Syracuse is going to do. And there's a lot of people, you know, 10, 11, 9 wins. And Oof. that's not happening. That's not happening if... Uh, if that line falls apart, if we have some injuries, yeah. a couple injuries, mm-hmm. we're in big trouble. Yeah. I mean... In, right yeah, now, it's... I'm confident with the guys we have. I'm confident. I'm confident that we have four, four definites and a possible. Yeah. And hopefully, <laughs> we can figure out that possible and turn it into a, a solid offensive line yeah all right so that's that now it's time to bring tyler on are you ready to bring tyler on and let him do his thing for a minute and no oh, yeah um, yeah we'll let him talk for a little while hit up the defense talk. i can cut his mic if i need to if he starts going on and on and on so yeah, uh, unfortunately have unfortunately have to give him that warning <laughs> exactly all right without further ado all right join us now as promised is host of the Trademark Podcast, former defensive end for the Syracuse Orange, our good buddy Tyler Morona, fellow podcaster. How you doing, buddy? Doing really well. How are you guys? Good, man. Thanks for coming on. Short notice. I just texted Tyler last night, and boom, here he is, right? I'm I'm always happy to be the fallback guy or like the last resort guy. And I'll always be that for you guys. Cause you guys are awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. I so called, thanks for having me. No problem. I called everybody else I knew. And I'm like, well, I guess I could text <laughs> Tyler. Why not? <laughs> so and that's fun. Oh, <laughs> stop. At, at least, at least you didn't have me on for specialists. If you have me on for the specialist episode where all we do is talk about the guy who won the Lou Groza award last year. And like, you know, <laughs> we run out of stuff 10 minutes in, then yeah. I would actually feel some type of way, but defense, I think we're going to be okay. No, we decided, well, we've already talked about having you on for defense and then we did your show, which is great. You've had a couple of great guests since then. Uh, Chris yeah. Carlson is, was on most recently, right? And yeah, he's, he's awesome. Coach Edinger. That was a great show. If you want to check yeah, out Tyler's, to you want to check out Tyler's trademark podcast and, um, it does. He does a good job, man. He gets the big names. See, we just get, we just try. we just get Tyler Morona. He gets everybody else. So we get the guy that gets the guys. But <laughs> anyway, so it's all, it's all a hustle, man. It's all a hustle. <laughs> it's all, all it really is. So with um, with that said, I mean, do Alton Robinson and Kendall Coleman need a formal introduction? 
I mean, do you think so? We've got um, where I want to start here with this, I guess, is Williams, uh, McKinley Williams. He started opposite of Chris Slayton last year, and obviously he's out. And um, you got Black and Rough probably to start. So, I mean, in your opinion, depending on how long McKinley Williams is out, I mean, how much deeper can we go there uh, before? That's always the million-dollar question. But I'll tell you what, McKinley Williams reported today is two to three, or week two or three in the schedule. So the hope, obviously, is for three. Uh, that's Clemson, home opener. That'd be great to have him back. But, you know, the, the – the interesting thing with defensive line, I was thinking about this today, and this is something I wanted to bring up. It's it's not the same as offensive line. And what I mean by that is offensive line needs continuity throughout. You know, they need multiple reps at that at the position they're going to start at for a little while because they have a common goal, whereas defensive line doesn't necessarily have common goals. Yeah, they want to prohibit the offense from moving forward but the individual jobs are so unlike every other spot on the line that there is a lot of you know specialty within the position itself so as long as we can have guys that are able to plug in and play at a certain position like with nose tackle with josh black first off we saw him in the, the documentary in 270 what he's listed at that cannot be exactly what he is weight wise <laughs> that guy's like 305 that's like 10 percent body fat so i feel really good about him right now being you know just a plug guy hopefully the the idea moving forward is that he can turn into a guy that uses his size strength power uh the combination power to me is something that just as a defensive lineman it's it's a buzzword that always gets thrown around but the the big thing is is that power is strength and speed combined to you know really create explosion and that's what i think is going to be you know huge for this defensive line up in the middle because i rewatched um chris layton from last year and he is like i know coach bear is trying to do this <laughs> but unsung hero man like yeah. that guy was taking two guys at a time and like just moving like the fact that he was a seventh round draft pick looking back is somewhat of like a, a crazy success story, but also selling him a little short. Like I think that he should have been a little bit higher in the draft, but then again, you know, draft stuff is for another day just because of the state of our program from before. But yeah. um, the guys in the middle, they're going to need to just really focus on, <laughs> I, I hate to sound like a coach, but like they really just got to focus on making sure that, if when they realize that nobody is supposed to come, you know, up into their gap and move them off the ball, that's all we really need from them the first two or three weeks before we can get to where, or really two weeks. We we need guys that aren't going to just have complete mental lapses, like all the way up and down the field. As long as we don't have that, our star power on the outside is going to carry us totally fine. The ACC is a lateral run game type of conference meaning that there's not a lot of teams minus bc that try to run right up the middle so what we need to do is allow the guys up the middle that are our defensive tackles not to create such gaps that we can't effectively use our defensive ends so that's kind of where i stand on it i'm okay but if l injuries linger i'm not so you know i'm not so sold on the, on what we have right now i mean that's what everything comes down to is the injuries <laughs> yeah well and we only had what three guys as far as defensive tackles that had really recorded any type of significant snaps in this year. And that's the big I mean, thing. Fear of the unknown is really the biggest kind of obstacle that we have right now. Right. Because yeah, like you talked about following recruiting. I mean, I know yeah. Curtis Harper and Shaq Grobsner, I mean, they're both there, but we haven't seen anything. And again, like you said, fear of the unknown. There's always going to be guys that got to step up, but can they do it? Or, I mean, are they – going to think about maybe moving in a defensive end or I mean I know back in the day my New York Giants they they ran a, a little package there where they had four defensive ends against the Patriots but <laughs> Tom Brady you, I mean so is that option there I mean I, I don't know I'm starting to think about it though when I sit and look at that depth chart at the defensive tackle because Kingsley Jonathan is nothing to Six nothing three. to sniff home I mean he's he's good he's a, he, all intents and purposes an ACC starter so and he's sitting behind two great guys. I don't know. That's the thing is that our, our edge depth at the moment is because we're so deep at defensive end just because our two starters are so good um, that anything as a backup to them is we're, we're seeing like a, just a huge value on anybody that's a second stringer. If they're anywhere above, 
you know, a, a non like, you know, if they're a second stringer at all, then we have so much depth at that position just because of how good our edge rushers are right now. Um, so that, that creates a surplus there. So you're right. I can see where um, Kingsley gets involved up the middle um, on rushing downs and then just pick our four best guys, you know, or in certain packages, let's let's blitz, bring three, try to get, you know, just as many athletes involved as possible on these passing downs. But again, we're talking about conference play really. Cause I'm not concerned at all. Right. I mean, everybody's concerned about Maryland being the trap game. Everybody's like, I don't care. Maryland is the all time team of like never quite being able to beat a team better than them. They never do it. <laughs> they always have the other team on the ropes and they can never do it. They're the Kings of almost winning. And that's why I have no problem thinking that Syracuse is going to win that game. So it's really like it's week three and beyond. So, and if the timetable is, we're fully healthy by Clemson, and especially going into conference. I don't. Th- I think this is like a, a topic about nothing because it's preseason. To be honest. Yeah. So uh, off <laughs> off topic quickly. Off topic quickly. You mentioned uh, early season games. You remember when we were on your show and we talked about Robert Washington? Yeah, I saw. Yeah, I was, I was hopefully going to bring that up today. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, we thought we it was speculated that he was he was actually accidentally added to Liberty's roster, and uh, so we were like that was the big news for that week when when we came on and talked with you. But it turns out he's coming here to I'm in Virginia Beach and right up the road in Norfolk ODU. He's going to go play for ODU. <laughs> so, I know what the hell happened. <laughs> how, how does an, how does another D1 team like? Whoops! Like we forgot, or like we just didn't know. Like, how do you not know whether a guy is on your team is gonna play for you or not? <laughs> like, in the seasons, like Trent, the season started. Like, I don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how former, do you just like, whoops? Right, you know, former like, Syracuse right. recruit, by the way. That's why we bring it up. I don't know if I probably he commit he committed like full boat, right, and then yeah. decommitted. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I'll never get that. Like, I remember like they were gonna do a ceremony. You know how, like, I'm not sure if I'm going to make another NBA thing? reference, but, like, to recruit Blake Griffin to go back to the Clippers, they, like, did, like, a ceremonial, this is what's going to happen when you retire. We're going to lift your jersey in the Raptors. So they, like, showed him, like, a presentation, like, this is what's going to happen to you. And then, obviously, they traded him, which is, like, hilarious in hindsight. <laughs> but I thought the funnier thing was, like, I thought for Robert Washington, we were going to do the opposite of that. We were going to lower 44 out of the rafters as a ceremonial gift right. for him being, like, our first four-star running back in, like, however many years. So the fact that, like, we were going to lower 44 out of the rafters and give it to him, and then, like, he mistakenly gets added to a team that we're playing, <laughs> it's, like, it's it's the greatest story. Like, it's, like, one of the cooler stories and, like, funnier stories that's happened in recruiting in a while. At least for our squad, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you if you know, you gotta laugh at yeah, some I, of this stuff, right? I laughed when I saw it today. Yeah. Um. All right, linebackers. Whoops. Now it seems like <laughs> it seems like every year that um you know at least during the Babers era here recently the linebacker position has been you know a carousel of players. Now Tyler, do you feel comfortable, more comfortable, less comfortable with what we've got lined up this year? Is it going to be any different? Or uh, do you just foresee the same type of scenario? Mm, that that's a good good question. Um, I'll I like to be an aggregator of information, at least in my brain. And what I mean by that is Julian Wiggum on my podcast. All he said was that they have to be serviceable in this in the way that we're going to play just because it's going to be very secondary. Like the secondary is going to drive how well we rush. The rush is going to, you know, determine how well we cover, but here's, you know, the guys in the middle of the field that are, you know, behind our defensive linemen, you know, are the linebackers, but for the most part in, again, in this conference, we're going to be playing against teams that throw the ball in, in large volume. And that's just how football is being played. So for the most part, we need two, good rangy linebackers on the field at one given time. So I feel comfortable with Andrew Armstrong. I I don't know how we're going to be in the middle, but to be honest, like if we have returning captains on this team, which we have, which there are plenty and captains, a a word that gets thrown around. And really what that means is just leadership. If we have good leadership and we have seniors up and down the, the, you know, the two deeps and returners, which means that, okay, number one, we don't have guys that are in there needing to learn plays. Like we're not, 
putting first year guys in there. The only guy that I see on the linebackers in really in this whole area that's a newbie is uh, Michael Jones. Yeah. So if he can, if he's you know up on the playbook, or even if he knows ten plays, if he knows the ten plays that we need to run, like dude, I'm telling you, when I was in camp, if I knew how to run ten plays efficiently, I like I would have been in a whole new world. I knew like three. And I was like a guy that thought I knew how to learn plays, but it's really the speed, you know, combining with all these different looks, everything else. And it's like, oh my gosh, like it's, it's overwhelming. But like, if it's just on him and that's one guy that's like, okay, well, if I can only learn this amount during camp and I can master that, and then after camp's done, I can spend a little bit more time, you know, learning, watching Andrew Armstrong, a guy that, you know, made a bunch of plays last year, got plenty of time is returning knows the system through and through hopefully and yes there are a lot of tackles to be made up with ryan guthrie and kalan whitner being gone that's true but at the same time their people will make up those tackles like unless every team runs for a thousand yards a game like the tackles will be made. So it's just like, I think it's just going to be a lot more dispersed this year, as opposed to the past couple of years where it's like, we see the same thing on the offensive side where one receiver gets the bulk of the work. I don't think it's going to be the case again. Like, I think it's going to be a little bit more um, wealth throughout our, our second level, as far as getting tackles. And I honestly hope that, um, you know, there's just, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the right thing you know, or how I want to present this, but it's just more so like, I think it's, like I said, it's just going to be more, more balanced across the board with, with the production. And it's just, when we are playing a run heavy team, we're just going to find out then. Like, I, I just don't know, you know, mm-hmm. so that is my biggest unknown. Well, you yeah. didn't really, you didn't really make me feel any better. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> but here is the reason to feel better is because when we are in that nickel setting, that 4-2 with you know a, a pull-down safety, which is looking like Trill Williams right now, that guy is a bona fide baller. Our defensive line are going to be ballers this year. Andrew Armstrong did play last year. Okay, so the only guy we have right now is Lakeem Williams. Fair. But he's a six foot, 225 pound senior, which means that he's ingratiated in the program as well. Middle linebacker, as long as he can call the plays again, should know how to get into the right spot at the right time. Middle linebackers are replaceable. The guys that aren't replaceable are the guys that are behind him. So that's that's really what it comes down to. All right. Joe? Yeah, I just think uh, Lakeem Williams brings a little bit more size than uh, Whitner did last year. So I certainly hope maybe that that changes a little bit because uh, obviously you know Whitner. Whitner was a safety. Changed right? over. Yeah, he was a safety. So again, right. uh, by the end of the year, middle of the year, those two were great. They had a bunch of tackles, but like you said, I think Ar- Andrew Armstrong is probably going to be in the beginning of the year ahead of where Guthrie was last year, just because of his experience. And then Lakeem Williams, from everything I've read. He was based last year was basically him learning the playbook, like you said. Uh, I think physically he's there. I think he got playbook last year, so now I think he's ready to to put it all in. And again, with Mikel Jones, hopefully we get some of these other guys that can pick it up and um, and help. Maybe if we do have to go four three <clears throat> against some of those running teams like BC, Wake Forest, uh, like you talked about. Pitt, uh, Pitt. Those yeah, those are really yeah. the, those are really the three that I worry about, and then that's really what gets me sometimes when we think about D tackles. If I know McKinney Williams, he's going to be back, but if he does get hurt, then that you know if we, our depth does get hurt there, then that's really the one thing that, that I get worried about is is teams like that being able to run down our throat because some teams did last year in certain situations. So again, if everyone's healthy on that D tackle up front, then I think we'll be good. But I think linebacker wise, I think we're a little bit ahead of the curve than we were last year. I totally agree. And honestly, there's, there's really only one man that I'm afraid of this entire season. That's going to be carrying the ball. And that's probably one of the best running backs in the country. And his name is Travis Etienne. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, (laughs) I mean, he's, he's a monster. Like, well, we've done good with him in the past though. We've done okay We're with him right. in the past. Well, we we silenced him, and then all of a sudden he's like, "No, hold on, no, yeah, yeah. I, I got this." And I rewatched. He, sick. he defeated us, like he I, did. But I'm not going to second he last year. Us. Last year, right? Oh yeah, yeah I, re- I rewatched that game the other day. Actually, but he's only getting and- better. Oh, oh absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. And I'll tell you what, it was arm tackles. It was depth and arms. I mean, he was just running through arm tackles, fourth quarter. He, you could just tell that we were just tired. That's what it was. ETN in the fourth quarter killed us. That was it. 
Yeah. But even games like with BC last year when we went up against AJ Dillon, like I feel like because it was Clemson and we had so much to worry about with okay, we got Lawrence, okay, then we knock him out. Okay, that was yep. that was fantastic. Okay, so we got one thing, but so we neutralized him. I obviously don't root for injuries. Um, but we neutralized him. <sighs> Yeah, they they're, they're going to be so much more of a headache this year. But anyway, what I'm getting at is like, <laughs> we we got all the way down to the last piece, right? And then that last guy was like, "Wait, wait, wait, wait. It's it's okay." Yeah. Whereas with Pitt, Pitt was like a fluke game in my opinion. Like I don't think that game was representative of who we really were because then you go on the flip side and you see a game like BC and we beat the crap out of them. They don't rush, they don't pass, I mean they don't do anything. And BC was a better team than Pitt was. So, again, like I'm just trying to say like there's only really again what it all comes down to at the end of the day is we're only concerned about one game really. Cause we should be okay with every other you know opponent that we face. So yeah. I know it's like, we kind of keep going in that circle, but yeah, it's, you know, it's for a trend, reason though. It's yeah. a, exactly. It's, it's exactly. It is for a reason. No. And I'd say we played Pittsburgh the week after we lost to that close Clemson game too. And it was two road games in a row. So I, I think that Clemson loss basically gave us that Pittsburgh loss and we were still right there. I mean, they're for sure. They're, their trash field goal kicker hit like two forty yard or it's just ridiculous. It just should have never even happened. But. <laughs> it was the worst game of all time. Like it was honestly like, and, it, and, and then we I, still went to overtime. I know. Well we went to double overtime yeah. and I had to fly home from actually from Houston. I was visiting and so and we had a flight home that Saturday and the flight was supposed to take off after the game was over, but it went to overtime. So I found out we lost on the other side of that point. And that was, that was excruciating. Just like four hours on a plane being like, what What's I going on? know it's bad. Like, cause you can't think anyway, you know, yeah. like, cause if you land and they win, it's like, okay, that was all good. But you know. I was at a wedding for the whole fourth quarter in overtime on my phone. Like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it was bad. Self-censored awesome himself, season. folks. Good job, Joe. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you. I'm getting better. <laughs> one more thing. One more thing real quick before we forget about the defensive line. I wanted to ask you guys, what do you think the sack total for oh, geez. for each of our defensive <laughs> ends are? Um, well, let's see. Ten for each last year. Right. Um, oh, God. Alton I, had let's five do, more tackles for loss as well, just as like a aside. Okay, well I'm gonna go another year, another year of experience, bigger, faster, <sighs> stronger. Let's go, let's go both between. Uh, I do I have to give an actual number. I ah, screw it, me. Nail what do you mean? Screw yeah. it, me. <laughs> what do you mean? An actual, I was gonna actual give a number. window. What else are you supposed to do? I was gonna right? give Is a it window. Be like Let's I, do five I for five imaginary number. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do. Uh, I'll say. How about over or under twelve, Sean? Over. Yeah, thank you for Joe for making that easy. Over, over twelve. You always so need to get just bailed now. That's so I know. stupid. I know. But thank you. I think Kendall Coleman will probably have more. I think he's probably gonna get. 14, 15, only because I think that Owen Robinson is going to get so much more. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it's yeah. a lot. Triple I know it's team. a lot. But I really think that Elton Robinson is going to get a majority of his, you know, they're going to be on him. He's been more hyped than Kendall Coleman in the offseason. So, barring an injury Certainly. again, uh, I just think, I mean, I think Alton will probably be right around his same. You know, I think it's going to be, but might possibly be a Chris Slayton. I know it's a little bit more difficult for a defense end to be handled like that, but uh, they, every team, every offensive line went after Chris Slayton because they knew they had to kind of neutralize him. And I think that Alton Robinson is going to be in that position this year, ultimately, even though he's a DN and it's a little bit more difficult. I can see every running back chipping him, you know, uh, tight ends, backs, yeah, everybody. So that's just my personal. I, I think Kendall Coleman will, will go a little bit high. I mean, I know 14, 15 up there 100%, but I know, I know. Hey, that's like what? Hey, man, one go big or go home, one, dude. One in a third a game. Oh, didn't Kendall have three in the, the bowl game? I, hey, just, look, I, I understand. I, I love the guy. <laughs> He's, we follow each other on Twitter, not to brag, but it's just like one of those things where it's like. <laughs> sounded like a brag to me. Um, <laughs> you got to get it in where you can get it. In. But, um, 
they rush so differently, which is why I really think that they play so well off of each other. Like they, the Syracuse lucked out so well by having them both. Like that is how you want to structure an NFL defensive line. Like you want to have a guy that can set the edge super well. Then you want to have an athletic freak on the other side. Like if you look back at the old Niners, um, not that old, not lot, that long ago, but you had, you know, Justin Smith and uh, Alden Smith and they, I think that was his first name, right? Alden Smith, oh, whatever. Yep. But they were yep. two. One was a bruising guy. The other, you know, with 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 force, with the ability to play the correct way. And then one guy was a freak athlete. And that's what we had. You know, they rushed so differently that I think that you know, even if Alton gets these in these positions where he is, you know, double teamed, potentially triple teamed with a chip, um, you know, a tight end, and a tackle, a guard, shading, um, a, a fullback, a, an H back coming up to potentially get, a, you know, get a piece of him. There's going to be one time where they make a mistake and Alton's good enough to make you pay that one time every time. And that's the yeah. difference, I think, between the two of them is that Kendall takes advantage of opportunity given to him. Alton makes his opportunities like he manufactures these sack opportunities. And that's what is so exciting to me is that like you can he can lose 95 percent of the game. And that one play, that one opportunity he gets that last five percent. It, that is going to change the game right there. So I think Kendall Coleman will stay on his pace, hopefully won a game, maybe, you know, for the for the games that he has zero, the whole have two. But I think Alton's just going to chip away, chip away, chip away. I could see 13 for Alden, Alton and 11 for Kendall. But I think that Kendall does a much better job this year at creating tackle for loss opportunities, if not for him, for somebody else. So yeah. that's kind of where I fall on that. Well, I'll tell you what, Alton Robinson, too, uh, he was – I think he was recruited and he was committed at some point to go to like Mississippi state back when they had Dak Prescott and they were good. They were real good back then. So, uh, it was, either, was it Mississippi, it was Mississippi state or a and It was one of the two. Cause I know he's, yeah. I think he's from Texas. It was one of the sec schools. Yeah. They both look the same to me. So I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> but, but either, either way, I mean, even if I know I went a little high on Kendall Coleman, but I'd say an, an uptick from combined 20 to combined 25, this year is probably, you know, without you individualizing go. it, I think exactly. I'm right, right there with so you. So he walks his 14 back. Before we do, oh, <laughs> dude, come before, on. Before we do, <laughs> you wanted to do a window. Come on, get out of here. Oh, I was gonna, yeah. Well, I mean, 12 to 15, something like that. That's kind of what I was thinking. Oh, so, God. I mean, not much. Do you know I how mean, big of a gap that is? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's three. I mean, sack I know. After, I know. sack I know. after okay. ten. All right. Oh man! Like getting to ten is like a threshold. You know, it's like meeting, um, you know, some sort of like you know big barrier, landmark achievement. And then after that, to me, as a former defensive end, if you can get above ten, everything above that with playing a twelve game schedule is like you know you're you're creating like you're putting yourself in higher and higher air like as you go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. That's why. Anyway, um, before I'm just going to I'm just going to move on. Yep. Yep. Please. <laughs> so before before we do DBs, uh, I think this is the perfect time for the poll because um, you'll see why uh, I put out a Twitter poll. 138 votes. That's kind of weak, guys. Which fresh yeah. fresh face on defense do you think will have the biggest impact? Drew to Azama drew nine percent. And then uh, Cornelius or Neil Young, Neil Nunn. At twelve percent, uh, Lee Pogba at twenty five percent, and then Michael Jones at fifty four percent. So, I mean, I didn't actually vote on this, but I'd say Michael Jones too. Uh, yeah, it seems like the runaway. But I mean, I I'll tell you, I want to see uh, none really bad on the field. I don't know why. Maybe it was the commit, decommit, recommit. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that did it for me. <laughs> oh, and, and uh, he was at, he was largely looked at as our best recruit as well. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This Michael Jones, though. I mean, you know, he's going to be he's going to be well, one of the better. Right, right. I mean, uh, Jones is looking to be uh, starting in four three package, and so uh, at least all through spring ball, he did. So um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Jones, that's it. Winner, hands down. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's it's this it's like what you were saying. I mean, if somebody brings you, 
20 Toyotas and they bring you, you know, a Mercedes, you're like, dude, I don't care about all these other Toyotas, man. Like, I just want the Mercedes, right? It's it's kind of, it's the same thing, you know. It's like you you're drawn to that because there is legitimate reason to be excited. Like you're handed this really awesome gift. And it's like, all right, let's let's see what you can do. I've never had something like this before. We want to take it for a spin. It's the same thing. I mean, I'm right there with you. It's the 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 star power again. You know, once you go above three stars, everybody gets excited. Yeah, me included. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. I don't know if we this was a, on your show or if it was a phone conversation, but you you mentioned that you could talk defensive backs. You can make a whole episode out of it. Could be because could be because there's about fifty of them. Uh, but that, well, that's so we we briefly we briefly talked about um, we briefly talked about um, oh Antoine Cordy coming back for sixth season. Uh, not really sure what kind of role he plays, but I mean, how do you kind of see it? You know, you've got this stud Andre Cisco. Who's just you know all American honors as a true freshman and ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year. Um, I think he what was he tied for seven, right? Yeah, he's tied for seven um, interceptions in the nation last year. So, um, you know he's a he's seven or second. He was tied for the nation's lead in interceptions with seven. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Yeah. yeah, I thought you said he was seventh in picks. I was like, no, he was. No, he was definitely tied. Tied. <laughs> because the BC guy was number one, yeah. and I thought that they both didn't they each get a pick against each other, and I think it was like I they believe, ended like stalemate. I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was it. Anyway, great radio. Um. Yeah. It's been, it's, it's, the whole thing's just been fantastic so far. So, <laughs> um. So, uh, I mean, how do you see it? How do you see it, Tyler? Well, like you said, I mean, there are there's so much love to go around, and it's like it, it honestly it brings a tear to my eye because what's the one thing? So when <laughs> in 2013 when I arrived on the scene, um, that's when we we moved into the ACC, and um, you, you know how many NFL wide receivers were in our conference that year, and I was just like, dude, we are not going to do well against these teams, like. Um, Humphreys, Martavius Bryant, Sammy Watkins were all on one team. Yep. Then you got all the guys, uh, Kelvin Benjamin, O'Leary at Florida State. I mean, every team had an NFL wide receiver. Nothing has changed, but the difference is, is that we're now winning games because we have the ability to actually put a body on somebody. We have these athletes that are able to keep up with guys. Um, and that's that's what's exciting to me is that like I don't have to go into a game anymore fearing about okay well the other quarterbacks gonna have their career day against us like that's that's over right. Nathan Peterman got an opportunity in the NFL because he beat Clemson and he put seventy plus points up on us like that's that's the reality this <laughs> you know what I mean like like the guy is terrible but he had a career day against us so like he gets to put that on his highlight tape um, the cool the really cool thing about where we're at as far as um, our secondary in general is that. Everybody has at least one year playing, and most guys have more than three. And what I mean by that is we have um, we have Chris Frederick, redshirt senior, Evan Foster senior, Devin Clark. His backup is a redshirt junior, so that's four. Uh, Ify Melifonwu, three. Uh, Trill Williams and Cisco are the only guys with two. So to me, it's like we like we're good. We're, like we're chilling. It's nothing like, to worry this about here in general. Yeah. Like it's. It's not nothing to worry about because again, like we, we got we got some big opponents. But the great thing is is that again, if you were to structure a team the way that you would at least I would like to have it, you know, structured, is that okay, we have guys that can cover in the back end so that if the quarterback holds it for three seconds, he's toast. Like that and that's just the way it's gonna be. It's we're gonna have to go, you know, chicken or the egg thing this whole season. It's like, okay, was that a coverage sack or was that just a you know, a D line sack? Was that, you know, an interception because we got pressure or was that just a good play? Like we're in good times. Like we're in the time where it's like we are now in the best of times as far as this year is, you know, concerned. Because, as again, Julian Wiggum, he was a former defensive back, and he was watching La Familia and saying, like, the DBs actually know assignments, which is, like, pretty <laughs> absurd. That <laughs> is that really that, that absurd? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's but absurd that he's got to say it. Yeah, yeah. That, 
Mm. So what I'm saying yeah. is that like we we had guys here before who didn't know their assignments. Right. So it's that like, he's pointing you're, that you're out. not going right. to be able to win that way. So we finally have the guys with the high IQ that also are fitting in their bodies. We've always if, if you're playing Division One football, it's and you're not succeeding. It's very seldom because your body is failing you. It's because it's, you know, it's up top that you don't have, you can't put it together because there's no, most college coaches don't make mistakes on bodies. You know, they don't, it's you're in high school. You can get a, you can get away with literally not knowing anything and making it work. I've seen it happen before. And that's, and that's, that's the big difference is that we actually have guys that are, you know, what I like to say is we got guys that are book smart and street smart. They can play on the field and they know their playbook. It's, it's, it's awesome. And I think really the biggest guy that to me is the unsung hero in this whole thing is Chris Frederick, just because I think that he does so much dirty work. He had so many tackles last year. He's pressuring the line of scrimmage with these outside runs. He's a guy that's not afraid to get dirty, throw his pad level down, get in the mix with these big running backs so that when they do try to take a shot on him, he's like, just, just wait, I got that covered too. So, I mean, it's like that's the guy that I'm really interested to see because I think that he can have a big NFL push with a great season this year. Really? Team high 31 straight games, too. Chris Frederick. Hey, yeah. it's, it's beautiful. Well, yeah. dude, and, and that's the thing that he mentioned, like what uh, Julian, what he mentioned, like a lot of times you can't see that, especially as a fan, like on the couch. If, I mean, obviously, sometimes it looks like bone coverage, but you don't know sure, personally don't know, whether right. or not. If you're in the, the huddle and you're a teammate, you know, like, this guy doesn't know what he's – like, you know that behind the scenes. And that's why when you look at something like La Familia, you can see that kind of stuff. But, I mean, the one of the things that I look at as far as a fan that's just been off the field and not been, like, to where you have been, uh, Tyler, is the size. The size of, of our defensive backs in the corners. I mean, I mean, I remember – the days of the Cordell Hudson's and Juwan Dowell's and, and Rodney Williams. And uh, granted, I mean, I thought that they were great players, but they were not the size that these guys are when you're looking at Trill Williams and Chris Frederick. I mean, those just like six, one, six, two corners, the, the, the NFL size corners with the same speed, even, you know, bigger, longer range. So again, I, I mean, uh, this secondary actually looks like, a top 25 college football secondary and like what you said it's 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 definitely exciting and like you said the deep the secondary is deep we're here and if we weren't as deep then maybe cornelius Nunn would be higher up in that pole <laughs> but i yeah. think it's one of those things where i mean that's just one area that i'm if i had one negative thing to say from a fan watching and i know evan foster's made some great hits some great plays but just his angles Angles after catches in the open field, Evan. Please. That's about the only thing. Other than that, I'm golden with the secondary. I don't think we got a lot to worry about. I've seen it's it's gone miles and miles since uh, you know papers got here. So Yeah. Can't That's say enough solid. about it's the solid. secondary. It's oh yeah. Solid. And they're fun to watch. I mean oh, yeah. they're freaking yeah, they're, they're playmakers. Yeah, exactly. I mean they made They're awesome. Yeah. They made and Melo Fonwu, by the way, six three two oh seven. That's what I'm saying. I was looking at that. He's you see what he enormous. did in North Carolina game last year, and you're like, I want some more of that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then that's that's why he's starting ahead of Scoop this year because he got in, he probably got in the weight room, put on some more pounds, and he's looking Absolutely. like the North Carolina he's, last year. And again, I mean, Trill Williams, I can't wait to watch this guy. I know. I can't After wait one to watch year this. under his belt, I just cannot wait. Like, oh, and Cisco too. But I mean, as far as well, Malifano Cisco, goes, yes. But uh, you know, yeah. he's been slowed by injuries. So, I mean, that's always a worry, and it's kind of one of those things. It's, like, always just a worry. Same with Scoop Bradshaw. So, um, I don't know. It's going to be fun, though. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, Baber said we're a defensive team, right? That's what now he said. Now we're a defensive team this so, year, right? So, this is my question. I love it. What I'll is take your, it all day long. What is your – pre Tyler, first. Yeah, okay. what's up? Uh, what is your preseason grade for the defense? Uh. Phew. Okay, so let me clarify that real quick, not to be like an a-hole about this, but um, <laughs> <laughs> what is the curve? Like, is Clemson or Alabama like an A-plus? Like, are we just going on like ultimate say, team, like 99s, all across, like 100 out of 100? Yeah, all, like, like, letter grades, letter grades, I would say, yeah. Like, like the old school yeah. college football games. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah okay, okay, for sure. Um, A-minus. I think it's an A-minus really? team. 
Oh, um, that makes me feel the good. only reason why it's not an A or better is just because of lack of experience in the linebacker, linebacker. position. Yeah. Granted, like if this was a video game, it would just be purely based on their attributes, which I think that even at that linebacker position, that second level position, our attributes are fine. Um, again, it's just like the awareness factor of all of the, um, you know, playing into it. Um, but that being said, if the D line shores up, injury free everybody's injury free i think this defense man this is a top 10 defense at the end of the day even if the stats don't reflect it just because uh, there will be some games where i think we could possibly be blowing out teams early and then we just kind of like let garbage time you know factor in there so um but i think like on a pff a pro football focus standpoint like yeah this this is like a, a 90 to 91 92 rated defense out of 100 that's awesome joe i was gonna go b plus Okay. And that's basically, again, it's just it's the unknowns of certain positions. But again, if people fall into place just like certain other ones did last year, uh, I mean, I could definitely see where, where Tyler's going with, with that. Absolutely. So I just want it to be Liberty. I just want it to be August 31st, 6 p.m. Oh, you're telling just, me, man. We're so close. We're so close. 11 days I away. I mean, I do have, I do have met multiple fantasy football drafts up until that point. So I don't want to just fast forward. But again, that's... Are you going home for a that. draft? What's that? Are you going back to Syracuse? Yeah, yeah, I'll be in Syracuse. Yep. All right. Well, hey, Tyler, where can they find you? At Tyler Morona. Always. That's on Twitter. It. And then the trademark podcast, Syracuse Football, on uh, wherever you get your podcast. What's the official um, title, though? What's the official, the real official title, Tyler? <laughs> the, the real? Okay, so. Give it to us. If you're searching, if you're searching it. Yeah. It's not going to come up this way. But I started this like as a joke, and I you like believed it. And the <laughs> yeah, title of the show, did. the title of the show, is the trademark podcast Syracuse Football, the Syracuse Football Digital Radio Program, brought to you by Tyler Morona, number ninety two in the program, number one podcaster in your heart. So I really appreciate you guys having me on and then letting me spew my fake title of the show again. No problem, no problem. I thought that was just you know, you doing you. Kind of was though you doing you. It, it really was, and honestly, if <laughs> you search it, know on, you. you know, if you search it on Google, just please type in trademark podcast Syracuse football. It's easy to it's find. I'll tell you what: you type in Cush Militia, you subscribe there, you scroll down. He's right there. It's on the bottom. Like, yeah, it's literally yeah. under your show. Yeah. yeah, they have us linked together now, and which is awesome. And vice versa. And vice versa. If you go to yours, right? You exactly. Down. They have us linked together. It's, yeah. it's awesome. I love it. It and, was meant to be. Um, I, I will. I'll, I'll always, you know, endorse your guys' show too. I love you guys. Um, I, it's so great to hang out with you guys. And um, you know, more so than anything else, it's the greatest time of the year. So who who can be excited? It you is. Know? So, it is. Again, and thanks. And there may be there. You know, Tyler and I, we were on the phone for quite a while one night, and you know, we got a little excited. And we said, you know what? Maybe we'll plan a game this year. Maybe we'll plan a bowl game. Maybe we'll plan something, and we'll be there. Maybe it'll be a bowl game. What do you think? Maybe so. Maybe. And then from there, it has to be live podcast time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. I'll bring the equipment. Okay. I'll, Uh-oh, I'm, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make you a promise off the air. How about oh, okay. that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll make you a promise okay. off the air. Okay. We'll keep them guessing. All right. Man, this popcorn is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by then, too, if we did do a bowl game, it would be out uh, most likely where mine and Tyler's friendly gentleman bet went by that time. So. Um, with the running back very, situation. Very true. So very true. It could be fun. Somebody's going to have to pay on that. Uh, well, I don't remember betting any money, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just dinner. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, so that is it today for Tyler Morona and Joe. I'm Sean. Hi. We are out. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Q's Militia Podcast, the fan's voice with Sean and Joe.